What's up guys, Josh Profits here. Alright, so if you're watching this video, you've probably seen the two previous videos about Amazon Wholesale. Um, you know my background, and you probably know by now what exactly Amazon Wholesale is. So, you might be asking yourself, what do I need to get into Amazon Wholesale, Amazon FBA Wholesale? Now, let's just start off by telling you what you don't need. Um, there's a lot of gurus out there, a lot of people out there telling you that you need this and that, that you need a commercial address, um, that you need a retail brick and mortar presence, that you need a loading dock at your commercial address, that you need a warehouse, um, you know, this, that, and whatever. Guys, I'm going to tell you one thing right now. You do not need any of those things. And do you want to know how I know that? It's because I was successful running my Amazon wholesale business in this basement. In the year of 2017, I did a quarter million dollars of sales. I'm going to keep on beating that, but there's a lot of people out there that think that you need all these things and it's just excuses, right? You think, oh, I can't get into this business model because I need X, Y, Z, whatever. Um, you do not need those things, guys. You're looking at my warehouse right now. You're looking at my commercial uh, address. This is, I'm in a basement, guys, of a residential house. Um, you don't need any of that stuff. There's no loading dock here, guys. You don't see any big trucks backing up to this with forklifts zooming around and, you know, shit all over the place. This is not a warehouse. I was very successful. I am very successful running my business out of this basement. Um, the amount of room that I have to work with is six feet by about 10 feet. Um, you do not need 5,000 square feet or, you know, 2,500 square feet or an entire, uh, facility to be successful running this business. You need to be organized. Um, you need to know what you're doing and that's it guys. Like as long as you're organized and you can maintain your work area, you will be successful. Um, you know, I, I have a little bit of OCD. Like I don't like to leave crap piling up. Like I see some resellers, it looks like an episode on hoarders. That's not me. I keep things very organized on shelving units and whatnot. So that allows me to utilize the small amount of space that I have properly and to be successful. Obviously guys, if you had all of those things that I mentioned previously, it is easier to scale. You can be more successful and you can grow a bigger business. But a lot of people don't have that stuff. If you have a spare bedroom or a corner of a basement like I do, um, you can still do this business model. So instead of uh, ranting on any longer about what you don't need, let me talk about what you do need, absolutely do need requirements for this business model. Um, I got a couple key notes here. Number one is you need to open up a business. You need to register a business. Um, it, with this business model, you need to treat it like a legit business and you're going to operate like one and um, you're going to open up a business and run everything under uh, an entity. Now, this doesn't mean that you need to incorporate and have a big corporation, so to speak. I personally have a sole proprietorship is what it's called in Canada. It's like the, the lowest base entry uh, into opening a business. It basically means that I operate a business under my own entity, under my own name type of thing. Obviously, like I have a business name that I operate under, but it still is underneath my own personal name. So I'm still liable for everything. Um, in the future, probably in the year 2018, um, I'm going to be switching over and I'm going to be incorporating, but you, you speak to an accountant uh, about what is best for you. Typically, I was told to start with a sole proprietorship until I can prove the business model and prove that I'm going to generate enough money. And then I can transition into incorporating my business as a corporation type of thing. Um, there are certain financial aspects or financial levels that you want to hit before you start uh, incorporating and taking on the high costs of, um, of different business structures. Uh, that once again, this is something you can speak to your accountant about. Uh, I'm not a, a, an accounting professional, so take that with a grain of salt. So, but number one is you need to open a business 
and have a tax number because these retail accounts, these uh, distributors and wholesalers that you're going to be talking to are going to want your tax number. Now this is for Canada. If you're in the States, you need to have a reseller license and also open up a business. Number two, you need to build a website. Um, I mean, you don't necessarily need to build a website, but I'm telling you right now, guys, for the amount of time it takes to build a website, which is very little, um, I just outsource it. And for the little cost that it takes to build a website, it will increase your odds of opening up retail accounts by, you know, tenfold easily. Um, it's not impossible to open up a retail account without a website, but trust me, you're, you're going to want to open up a website. Now there's two different ways you can go about doing this. Um, you can open up just a regular landing page type website. That's what I have. I started with it. I was successful with it. Um, it was the easiest, cheapest, and most generic type of website to open. Um, I basically just have a website that when you go to it, it's like, uh, one landing page that says what who we are what we do and you know has like a professional type image and then there's another link where it's basically a contact us page um, and then it, it just refers you to like a little contact form where you can fill things out like why you're contacting us the date um, you know a little subject field basically like a, a note field and then that gets sent automatically to a professional email. The next thing you guys are going to want... Oh, sorry. Before I, I get off this website topic. So that's the generic type of website. Or you can do a niche-oriented type website. Now, the difference is that um, the generic one is just going to be about, about your business, who you are, etc. And then that would basically give you access to sell a whole bunch of different products. Now that's what I do personally for my business. I do not specialize in one specific niche. Like for example, um, toys and board games. I don't, I do not or, uh, you know, I'm not specific to like that one type of niche or, um, health and personal care or, you know, sports and outdoors or something like that. Um, but if you create a website that is niche oriented, for example, sporting goods or electronics, if you were to create a website that was an actual e-commerce website, like a Shopify or WooCommerce website, where you can log on to, or you can go to the website and there would be all these products being displayed on it and you could actually click and buy on that website, a legit full out built up e-commerce website, your success rate of opening accounts um, with distributors or retailers is going to be even higher, guys. I mean, like tenfold from, from the generic side. Um, it will be incredible. Now, the pros and cons are is that to build that type of website, it's going to take a little bit more time and you're going to have to invest a, quite a bit more money, but... You, your, like I said, your success rate of opening accounts will be extremely higher. And in the end, that's going to result in a higher return on investment for your time. Because a lot of time goes into um, finding products and then contacting distributors and wholesalers. Um, and that's not the end of the story, right? Like you got to, you got to really uh, sell yourself and sell your business and, and add some, some value or, you know, tell these distributors and wholesalers on how you can add value and et cetera, et cetera. And um, if you, you know, if you have, if you can just prove that you're already selling in that category or that niche and you have a full out built up e-commerce website, um, they're going to hand you the, the key to their catalog a lot quicker than they were, let's say to me with just a generic uh, website that says, hey, we're an e-commerce seller etc etc um, now I don't want to discourage you because like I said I have a generic type website and I'm very successful um, opening accounts myself and I do not actually need um, an e-commerce built up website that is going to be something that I'm going to be looking at doing now that I've generated some income or uh, some 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 money from my 2017 sales going into now 2018 
I'm looking to invest back into my business and you know invest a thousand or two thousand dollars into building out full out um, niche oriented websites like for electronics or for sporting goods example like just these are examples that I'm telling you guys and then once I have these specific websites built then I can contact retailers in those niches and say hey every time I contact them I forward them the link to my website and say hey listen we're already an established seller in this niche we know what we're doing etc cetera, etc cetera. they can go to our website and see exactly what we're doing and that will be the golden key um, to the golden catalogs guys now another thing is the more professional you can make these websites look the better so if you have no experience in building websites I do not recommend building some you know old school myspace website that does not look good it's not very optimized you're gonna want to outsource the web the web building guys unless you have experience doing this um, don't get discouraged because it's super cheap to do my first website I believe cost me about hundred and twenty dollars sorry my only website that I've gotten built for this business cost me about hundred and twenty bucks I got it done through somebody on Fiverr and it was super easy cheap you know they take care of all my web hosting for me it just it's super easy guys one stop shop go on to Fiverr and find somebody on there for super cheap it'll be you know it's easy guys um, the next thing that I can't stress enough is to always have a professional image um, you do not want to be contacting people from Josh profits um, you know whatever at gmail.com they're gonna you know they're gonna be looking at that like who is this guy is he working out of a basement uh, et cetera, et cetera. Like it, you need to have a professional image guys. So what I do personally or what I did was I purchased, um, an email that was my name. So Josh at company name.com. And you can do this from various places. Just hit up Google. I personally did it through Google. Google offers a service where you can do that. And it cost me $5 a month. Um, I know you can do it when you buy hosting through like GoDaddy or some of these hosting sites like Namecheap and stuff will actually offer that as a package or you know for free when you purchase uh, your domain name through them. Um, but that is an absolute must, absolute must. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. You do not want to be contacting them from an unprofessional email. Another thing guys is when you're contacting them from your professional email, you want to be as professional as possible. Uh, keep in mind, guys, that this is a business that you're running and you're contacting another business and they get these kind of requests from people all the time. And they don't want to see an email that just says, hey, can I sell your stuff? <laughs> like, you need to send a professional, well-formatted, well-thought-out email um, curated or you know specifically for their brand or their you know whatever they're distributing you're going to want to kind of hit it home and say hey you know this is Josh from such and such company um we love your products we also sell in the you know in the toys and games category we're very familiar with selling in the toys and games category we're a big e-commerce distributor or a retailer sorry we sell across various platforms you get the idea guys um, you have to very you have to sell yourself connect to them um, let them know that you're not just um, you know Josh profit sitting in a dark basement here you have to let them know that you you know you mean uh, to do business and you know you're ready to to take action and and open up a retail account and start uh, placing orders right away so those are the absolute must guys just to recap you're gonna open a business get a tax number um, you know if you want to be professional you got to get professional number two is you're gonna build a website whether that's a generic type website or a niche oriented website I typically would um, suggest going for products that you know more about you're more familiar with so if you're familiar with electronics or 
uh, you know, if you're an action figure collector or something like that, like that um, try to get into those type of niches first. It's a little bit easier to, uh, to, you know, to work with something that you're interested in. And number three is you're going to maintain, you're going to create and you're going to maintain a professional image at all times. Um, which is you're going to get the professional email, you're going to speak professionally on the phone, and you're going to send professional type emails. Um, and those are the absolute must, guys. That's it. There's, you know, there's no secret uh, tricks or anything like that. You, Like I said, you do not need an, uh, a commercial commercial address. You do not need a retail brick and mortar presence. You do not need a loading dock. You do not need forklifts. You do not need $10,000 or the crazy amounts of capital. I started with a credit card and my first order was $250. So anybody out there that tells you that wholesale, you need a lot of capital, they're lying to you. You do not need that. Um, every wholesale or distributor that I've had has not had a minimum order. Um, at least if the whatever they if they did have a minimum order, it was so low that I didn't have to worry about it. It was maybe like a hundred dollars or something, but none of them mentioned a minimum order. Sometimes I had to sell myself and tell them that I would order. Like I heard no a lot, and I said, "Listen, um, I will order, you know, five thousand dollars worth or ten thousand dollars worth on my first order to show that I am." Um, you know, serious about doing business with you guys. Now that was kind of something that I used as a tactic to open up an account that I really wanted access to and they wouldn't give me access to it. Um, I had to kind of, you know, that was my bargaining chip, but that wasn't until I got into the business model a little further and, or into the wholesale model a little further and I had some capital rolling behind me. And, uh, and I was able to increase my credit card limit, so on and so forth. So, that's it guys that's all you need sorry for the long drawn out rant here but i just really wanted to hammer that home get that in your head that you don't need what half these things that these gurus are telling you you can start with little to no money guys um you just got to kind of know what you're doing and you know listen to what i'm telling you and watch the rest of the videos i'm about to post if you guys like the video please hit the like button it means a lot to me um, it shows that you guys appreciate the content that I'm putting out and appreciate the time that I'm taking into doing these videos. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button. And if you guys want to see anything specific or have any comments, please leave it in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time, peace.